Sailors, what's the creepiest most unnerving thing you've witnessed while at sea? I worked on tugboats for about 6 years. The back deck is considered a wet deck meaning it isn't unusual for it to be underwater at times. We were making tow with an oil rig at sea with waves that were 14, 16 feet, and one hit us just right, taking my coworker George and pulling him out to sea. Now it's 3am and pitch black. This is nearly always a death sentence. About 20 seconds later another wave brought George back on deck, plopping him safely on his ass right next to the winch. George laughed and got right back to work without missing a beat. My dad and I were sailing in the Sea of Cortez. It was early morning with some patchy surface fog. I was 14 or 15 at the time. We heard what sounded like applause in the distance, but becoming louder. We could soon see a patch of disturbed water getting closer and closer and hundreds of objects flying out of the water and splashing back down. A few of them flew out, hit the deck of the boat, and bounced back into the water. Stingrays. A whole school of them, jumping out of the water for some reason. It was weird and awesome thrill. Two years ago I was about 150 miles offshore from Long Island, New York, in a 31 foot boat. We were trolling for yellowfin tuna. In the distance we saw two huge fins coming out of the water, so we headed towards them thinking it was a couple of sharks. As we got closer, we realized it was one big shark, there it was just cruising slowly at the surface, not even the slightest bit disturbed by us approaching. Once we got up next to it, we realized that this shark was almost as big as the boat. It had to be at least 25 feet long and several thousand pounds. I was in absolute shock as we passed it. I'd never seen a shark even close to that big. I've seen plenty of whales, turtles, dolphins, sharks, all kinds of crazy things out at sea. But never a predator this large. It was definitely not a whale shark. This thing was a killer. I want to say that it was a tiger shark, but the internet says they don't even get close to that big, so I really just don't know. I wish I could have gotten a picture of it, but I was just frozen. I couldn't even move. I will never forget that moment. The ocean is an incredible place for. A couple of years ago I was sailing as a cadet on a merchant vessel, and I was scheduled on the evening watch. The rest of the crew was enjoying dinner, and I was to call if anything went wrong. We were sailing over open ocean, no land within a day sailing around us and all of a sudden I notice a island coming up on my bow. It was still far away, but it shouldn't be there. I looked at the maps, checked my position multiple times, and then I noticed the island did not appear on my radars. I called down to the mess room to tell there was a weird island in front of us. The chief mate came up and checked again the maps and positions. He also noticed that the radars did not see the island. We called the captain, and when he came up he started laughing. He was a rolled sailor with over 40 years of experience under his belt. He explained us it was a Fata Morgana. Fata Morgana is caused by low level temperature differences that can cause light to do strange things. Sometimes things about a finger width or two on the horizon appear stretched. Other times things can be reflected in the sky or seen over the horizon. The real island was more than a day sailing away in the direction we were heading at that moment. After that incident he took over the watch and I went down. It wasn't really creepy, but it was strange fine. A mate of mine I was working on a tuna boat with came across an aeroplane emergency life jacket floating in the water about 200 miles out at sea, east coast of New Zealand 6. Not a sailor, however this was at sea. My dad went boating with some friends down the Iroki Point in Mexico in the mid 90s. They went out late at night to drink. It was incredibly dark apart from the boat lights when suddenly a helicopter flew above their boat and the local who took them out shut everything off immediately. The helicopter hovered over some water in the distance and dumped a few bodies into the water before flying off. When it was out of sight the local turned everything back on and shrugged it off saying, they do that all the time, never seen it, so close up before. I'm not a sailor, but my family owns a boat and I frequently go out on fishing trips in the sea with my dad. Well, on one trip, we were out about I think 10 miles from the beach. 
My dad was telling me about how he got into and won a bar fight, and I was just silently listening when a weird whistling slash howling sound sort of surrounded us. I can't really describe it. It was like a cross between a wail and the sound of someone blowing air over an open bottle. My dad looked pretty calm, but I could tell he was freaked out too. It went on for about another minute, slowly becoming stronger, until it just abruptly ended with a screech from somewhere in the water. We never talk about it, and I still wonder what was making that sound 8. Not a sailor, but a marine on a ship. We were cruising through the Pacific, when we received an SOS from a boat from what I heard he was trying to cross the ocean by himself. Took a few days to find him. I remember watching off the side of the ship. The sails were imprinted with a Chinese flag a small team was sent to board the small sailboat. But when they arrived no one was on board. We searched for a body for the following days but found nothing. Still don't know what happened to him now. When I was about 19, maybe 20, my mom's boyfriend at the time decided to take us out on his boat one afternoon so that we could lounge around and swim in the ocean far from the shore. We were super excited because the water was turquoise, completely see-through, and the perfect temperature that day. So we found what seemed to be the perfect location, dropped the anchor, and had a snack. Before long, we were completely surrounded by hundreds of giant milky white jellyfish. There were so many that we couldn't see clear water anywhere around us. Their bells were easily 5 feet in diameter, if not more. We did not swim that day. Not me, but my uncle was once scuba diving on the Great Barrier Reef off Australia. He was doing doing some kind of study for the university he worked for. Something to do with house and predators and the ocean hunt by detecting the electrical activity of fish nervous systems. So he finds this big field of sponges. Now, for those who don't know, sponges are basically like plants. They don't move. They are attached to where they grow, and they filter water that moves through them, straining out nutrients. So there's this field with like a thousand sponges attached to the reef. Now, my uncle Ray didn't dive alone. I mean, he could, but he didn't. It's safer to have a dive buddy. So he's looking at these sponges and his dive buddy is swimming away after some fish part of the study I guess. And then the sponges start moving. All at once, they twist and bend, and as one, each seems to reach out, grab onto a different part of the reef, let go of the old part, raise back up on the new perch, and they go back still again. Overall they moved about a foot and a half. An unexplained undersea mass sponge migration. I was pulling a small sailboat mast from the bottom of a lake during a storm, waves had turtled the boat. So I was about 10 feet down, and pulling the mast up, and the weight of it pushed me down, so I was basically standing at the bottom of the lake, and could see the waves up top. It was an overall weird slash frightening slash stimulating experience. And then something big swam past me, and brushed my leg, must have been at least 3 feet long. I eventually got the boat turned back over, and the mast on board, and we got towed in. As we hit land I laid down on the beach, and decided I wasn't going to go in the water for a couple days. Worked the shrimp boats in the gulf back in the 70s 100 miles off the coast of Louisiana and the sea got dead calm. I mean dead calm, not a ripple or a swell. The sea was so calm that vibrations from the engine idling would make little ripples in the water. The surface of the sea looked like a huge never-ending mirror extending out in all directions. The visual memory I have of seeing that perfectly flat sea in the moonlight is deeply etched in my memory, and I can see it today in my mind, just as real as if it was happening now. I could talk about 25 foot seas in the middle of a hurricane, or a half dozen water spouts dancing around us during a summer squall, or sagassum seaweed as far as the eye could see, so thick around the boat that you could walk on it, or flying fish all taking flight at the same time like a flock of birds skimming across the water but none of that stuff had the impact on me like the dead calm of the sea 100 miles offshore, 